Jerry 501. I'm in nuclear news. USA bullying Japan into keeping nuclear power. Uh, I'm sorry. This just really hit me. After all that these people have been through, the government finally started to listen to the people and they made a decision based on that which was unprecedented that in their innovative energy and environment strategy the culmination of a year-long policy review process set the previously unthinkable target of zero nuclear energy by the end of the 2030s in resolving to phase out nuclear energy, the Japanese government did what it had never done before. It allowed itself to be influenced by the will of the people. However, the backlash was immediate. Business groups banded together to condemn the strategy. Governors of prefectures hosting nuclear facilities expressed concern about the future of these facilities and perhaps equally significant, the governments of France, the UK, and the United States communicated their displeasure. In the face of this onslaught, the government went weak at the knees and failed to give the strategy formal cabinet endorsement. Okay, France and the UK's public reaction to the innovative energy and environment strategy related to Japan's responsibility to accept the return of radioactive waste from spent nuclear fuel reprocessed in their countries. However, the response of the United States was more complex. The United States is concerned about the proliferation implications of Japan's massive plutonium stockpile which currently stands at 44 tons, which is enough to make over 5,000 Nagasaki-style bombs. If Japan goes ahead with its nuclear fuel cycle program, in particular reprocessing spent nuclear fuel, this plutonium stockpile will grow even larger. But if Japan intends to phase out nuclear power, it will have no reactors in which to use this plutonium. The U.S. government could have responded in either of two ways, by stating that it would retract permission to reprocess spent nuclear fuel sourced in the United States, or by pushing Japan to retract its nuclear phase-out strategy. It has certainly expressed its concern about the implications of the contradictory strategy for Japan's plutonium stockpile, but it seems to be emphasizing the latter approach, namely calling for Japan to remain committed to nuclear power. Oh, that's just so sad. At least one of the motivations is not hard to fathom. In recent years, Japan has become more than just a customer for the U.S. nuclear industry. The current state of U.S. nuclear industry is such that it would be hard-pressed to construct nuclear power plants without the Japanese cooperation. In fact, Toshiba now owns Westinghouse, while GE's nuclear operations are run through subsidiaries jointly owned with Hitachi. The Innovative Energy and Environment Strategy was considered by the Cabinet on September 19th, five days after it was re released, but to everyone's surprise, the Cabinet did not formally endorse the document. On September 22nd, the Tokyo Shimbun newspaper reported that the U.S. government had demanded that no Cabinet decision endorsing the strategy be made. Other newspapers reported that the U.S. government was pressuring Japan to abandon its nuclear phase-out aspirations. More recently, a series of statements by former senior U.S. officials and advisors suggested a concerted campaign could be underway to intimidate the Japanese government. And you can only imagine what that really entails. These people claim that Japan without nuclear power would be bad for nuclear non-proliferation. The basis for this claim is not fears about Japan's plutonium stockpile. Rather, it is that allegedly Japan without an active nuclear power program would be less able to support the United States' non-proliferation efforts. The question arises, will the public will 
expressed in the national debate be overridden by pressure from overseas? Will the first tentative steps towards participatory democracy in Japan's energy policy be thus undermined? Of course it will. Of course it will. The United States has no right to tell the Japanese whether or not they should phase out nuclear power. On the other hand, countries like Australia, which we control, thanks to Halliburton, which have nuclear cooperation agreements with Japan have a legitimate right to demand that Japan not add to its plutonium stockpile. They have every right to demand that Japan not separate any more plutonium at its reprocessing plant in Rakasho. A national election is scheduled for December 16th, 2012. Due to the general confusion in Japanese politics, the election may not deliver the type of clear verdict on nuclear energy that one would otherwise expect. But whatever the outcome, Japan is undergoing a historic shift in its energy policy. The Japanese people need international support in this process, but they don't need to be bullied. Well, no, they don't need to be, but that's just the United States. And, uh, I, I love America, I love the American people, but I am so sorry that my government is a bully, they are murderers, they have turned their back on their own people, fed us propaganda that they are so wonderful and everybody else is bad. And it is embarrassing. And there's nothing that we can do about it. So I apologize to all the people in Japan. What our government does is not what the people want. We don't want war. We don't want all of this. So to hell with the US government and my prayers go out to all of the people in Japan. Uh, I hope they stay safe and they're on their toes, uh, given the fact that they might have more large earthquakes. And as always, God bless.